Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an Abzan Counter Company deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the reason we're exploring this archetype is because of the recent addition of a Winding Constrictor in Kaladesh Remastered. So now between Winding Constrictor and Conclave Mentor, we have eight of these two mana creatures that essentially give us an extra and plus one plus one counter whenever placing counters on one of our creatures. And one card that did get omitted in Kaladesh Remastered is Walking Ballista, which is typically quite powerful in these plus one counter synergy decks. But now that we don't have Walking Ballista, it becomes a lot more tempting to play Collected Company in this deck, which is typically a nombo with X mana cost creatures like Walking Ballista, Stone Cold Serpent, and Wildwood Scourge, which we typically see in these plus one counter synergy decks. And instead we get to play Collected Company, which lets us take a look at the top six cards of our library and put two creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield. So it's going to help us find cards like Winding Constrictor and Conclave Mentor and all the other plus one counter synergy creatures in the deck. When Whenever you're playing a company deck, typically aim for at least 30 creatures that you can hit with company, so we're often going to avoid creatures above 3 mana. And then the only non-creature spell in the deck besides company is three copies of Vivian Argbo Ranger, which is also incredibly synergistic in this deck and also gives us access to a bit of interaction with the minus three ability, because otherwise the deck doesn't have any removal. And then the minus five also gives us access to a wish board. So even in best of one, we have access to an entire sideboard of creatures we can potentially find. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana, we've got the full playset of Lenore Elves to give us a bit of mana acceleration, help us play that Collected Company on turn three. Then we also have the full playset of Pelt Collector. Don't have a ton of giant creatures to help grow the Pelt Collector, but playing a Pelt Collector on turn one and then following it up with a turn two Winding Constrictor or Conclave Mentor will result in a 3-3 Pelt Collector on turn two that can already attack because it will get that additional plus one plus one counter. And then we also have two copies of Swarm Shambler, which enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter and whenever a creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls we get to make a one one insect creature token and for one mana we can tap swarm shambler to put an additional plus one plus one counter on it which also makes for a nice mana sink and then of course we've got our four copies of conclave mentor which also gains life equal to its power whenever it dies and Winding Constrictor, which is a 2-3, so it can survive some of those two damage burn spells. Then we've got two copies of Scavenging Ooze, giving us access to a bit of life gain and graveyard hate in the main deck, and in the more grindy matchups where lots of creatures end up in a graveyard, we can also end up with a very large Scavenging Ooze. And then two copies of Luminarch Aspirant from Zendikar Rising, a 1-1 Human Cleric, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control. So all these creatures that can incrementally add plus one counters to our creatures also synergize quite nicely with Constrictor and Mentor. And then moving on, at 3 mana we've got a singleton copy of a Gregma Skyclave Ravager, which is a 0-0 that enters a battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and whenever another creature we control dies, if it had a counter on it, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Gregma, and when Gregma dies, we get to make an XX black and green Hydra creature token, where X is the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on Gregma. Then we also have two copies of Champion of Limehold, which is a 1-1, and creatures with power less than Champion of Limehold's power cannot block creatures we control, and whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of Limehold. So this can turn our creatures into unblockable threats and also synergizes nicely with cards like Collected Company, since if we hit another creature alongside Champion, it will pick up a plus one plus one counter right away, and of course also great with Constrictor and Mentor. And then we've got three copies of Rishkar, P. My Renegade, was already in Jumpstart, but reprinted once again in Kaladesh Remastered. It's a 2-2 legendary elf druid, and when a Rishkar enters a battlefield, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, and each creature we control with a counter on it can also tap for green mana, so that can be very helpful when trying to cast cards like Vivian and Collected Company, or activating or scavenging ooze in the late game. And then we've got three copies of Ornery Reef Ooze, a 3-mana 2-2, that when it enters a battlefield lets us put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and when Ooze attacks we can put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. 
And then topping off our curve, we've got our four copies of Collected Company and three copies of Vivian Arcbow Ranger, which is incredibly powerful with the plus one ability, letting us distribute two plus one plus one counters among up to two target creatures, and they also gain Trample until end of turn. And then the minus three gives us access to a bit of removal, saying target creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. And then the minus five, which we can access on the second turn already, lets us reveal a creature card we own from outside the game, meaning the sideboard, and put it into our hand. And then we've got a varied sideboard with lots of silver bullets we can search up, including Containment Priest, Hushbringer, Sun Cleanser, great against the energy decks, Scavenging Ooze for more graveyard hate, Knight of Autumn can blow up artifacts or enchantments, Questing Beast to attack down Planeswalkers, Shifting Ceratops against blue decks, Yosharn to stop Sacrifice decks, Elder Gargroth just a good value creature, Virgil's Gear Hulk I couldn't find room for in the main deck because of Collected Company, but of course incredibly synergistic alongside Winding Constrictor and Conclave Mentor. And then Kogla and Thorn Mammoth give us access to a bit of removal. Crater Hoof Behemoth can be a nice finisher if we've got access to a ton of mana thanks to Rishkar. And then Stone Cold Serpent and Voracious Hydra, other versatile creatures we can play at any point in our curve. So of course lots of customization options for the sideboard. And then quickly going over the mana base, which is something I did spend quite a bit of time on. We've got a Singleton copy of Indatha Trium, which can fix our mana nicely, but of course comes into play tapped. Then we've got 10 Shocklands between 4 copies of Temple Garden, 4 copies of Overgrown Tomb and 2 copies of Godless Shrine, which is the only non-green producing land in the deck. Don't want too many of them of course because of Vivian. And then we've got 2 Basic Forests, and then 4 Woodland Cemetery, 3 Sun Petal Grove and 2 Branch Loft Pathway. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Missing white mana, but I can still activate Shambler on 2, and if we draw any third land, Rishkar gives us access to the mana to cast Company. So I think it's still a keep. Opponent on Mono Red. Yeah, we'll play the Elves. Probably gonna die, but if it doesn't, we get to play a 3-drop. Shock kills Elves. Now one interesting interaction between Soulscar Mage and Winding Constrictor is that Winding Constrictor also means we get additional minus one minus one counters, which of course is not beneficial. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Take two. Probably gonna be more than two. Third Soulscar Mage, opponent passes. Well, I guess we want to play Rishkar here. Shock kills Rishkar. And then we're hoping for land so we can company. Chandra is a pretty good last card to have. I knew you needed my help. It's gonna kill the Shambler. It's playtime. Right, found a land. So we're down to eight. And we'll see what our opponent does. It's gonna be two damage from Chandra. Can't forget about Ramana Prunes dealing two damage potentially. And we're gonna attempt an ambush with company here. And alright, found Rishkar and Mentor. Mentor can also gain life if it dies, but of course the Soulscar Mages mean if it gets minus one, minus one counters, it's gonna shrink down the toughness and the power, so we don't gain any life. Shadow Skull Smashing. It's gonna shrink down my two creatures. And then probably attack Chandra with both. See what happens. Opponent lets Chandra die. I don't need 
And I think we're going for another company. And hope we don't miss. Eh, not the best hits. So, am I double chumping? Or just chumping with the Lanor Elves? I think I just chump with Elves. And then next turn, if I go Conclave, Mentor, or Reef Ooze, we get to add a ton of power and toughness to the board. Then we'll put a counter on probably the Pelt Collector. And this is an attack for 13. Got two creatures back. So we're not that to land and ram on a prunes. We would go to one. And we should have lethal on the way back. Especially now with the company. GG's. Tons of replacement effects. And my opponent explodes. So very close game here against Monoret. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. I'm missing the white mana for Mentor, but this hand just ramps into Vivian, which is its own game plan. And then if we find white mana, great. If we find creatures we can cast, this will be good too. Let's see what we're up against. It's gonna be a 1 1 Stone Coil Serpent. And there's my Sun Petal Grove, perfect. So we get to go Mentor plus Elves, and then next turn Vivian with Mentor in play. So the plus one represents four plus one plus one counters. And we'll probably stay back to protect Vivian. So they could adapt Growth Chamber Guardian and turn it into a 4 4. And I could trade for my Conclave Mentor. Or I could just let Vivian take the hit and then we still have a Vivian in play. Right, it's going to be a Primal Might to trade instead. Gain for life, and we still have a Vivian in play, which could also minus five, but I think we want to keep Vivian around. And then we'll plus, so what am I afraid of here? Maybe a mutated creature onto the Serpent, if they mutate a Gem Razor, this could turn into a 5-5. Five five. So making a 5-5 five five Elves might be the play. And then next turn I can maybe minus five, but we'll see. I can also block a questing beast now. Gotta start thinking about what creature to get with Vivian, since we've got so many options. Aha, uh -huh, they've got their own Vivian. So a 3-3 Stone Coil. So on the board, could also decide to just fight a Stone Coil with the minus 3 kill Vivian. 
that's definitely a reasonable play as well. But is there something better? Probably. So I've got 7 mana without tapping my 5-5 five five elf. So I could get a Thorn Mammoth. That seems pretty good. Alternatively, could get a Verger's Gearhawk, Kogla. I think I prefer getting Thorn Mammoth. That's one more arrow knocked. And then kill Vivian. And we still have a Thorn Mammoth in play. A Brawl Staple making an appearance in Historic as well. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a Keepable Hand. No black mana, but no black cards in hand just yet. And there's Overgrown Tomb. So turn one elf, turn two. I've got a few options. Opponent on blue green. So getting the Oran Reef Ooze in play early is definitely beneficial. But same goes for Luminarch Aspirant. So maybe this turn we double spell. And then there's no real need to get another elf in play. So I could go Aspirant plus Swarm Shambler. Storm Shambler gets Lofty Denial, so glad I didn't run out to Oran Reef Ooze. Opponent passes. So, I guess we'll move to combats. Maybe my opponent's playing a Spirits deck, although it doesn't seem to be the case. And play Shambler, and then next turn if the Ooze attacks, we can put counters everywhere. So this requires 4 mana to be activated, so doesn't quite work. Could maybe see an opposing company. Nightpack Ambusher, alright, I wasn't expecting that one. But they're forced to trade for the ooze. Opponents down to eight. And winding constrictors, excellent. It's gonna get countered by a rewind. Alright. And then. What happens if I put counter on Aspirant attack with everyone, even if they have another Ambusher? It's probably fine, because we would have 8 damage going through. If they block a non-Aspirant creature, so they're forced to jump here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. No black mana, but no black creatures in hand, facing a Yurion deck. And yeah, we just get to curve out one, two, three, four. Could also decide to hold Swarm Shambler until after I play Conclave Mentor, which is actually reasonable. But I think I'm still gonna try and curve out here. And then the turn where I would have played Shambler later, I can just activate it. The main reason to hold it is because it can potentially put a counter on the champion as well. For now, I guess playing the elves might be better than Mentor, since then we can company next turn. And then I'll just level up my Shambler. Might as well do it now. 
and then hopefully company delivers. Could also make the argument that we should play Champion of Lambhold first, and then company to hit more creatures afterwards. But we also want to be mana efficient, so I can maybe play this on 4 mana and then Mentor and Champion on 5 mana. Glass Casket going after Shambler, so we still get to company at least. Now my opponent could be playing Sweepers, but not at 3 mana, so probably better off playing around a counter spell and playing the company here. And we hit pretty well here with Collector and Orin Reef Ooze. And then probably put the counter on Ooze itself. Another casket deals with Orin Reef Ooze. Alright. So is this turn, I could go Rishkar and then play Mentor by tapping Pelt Collector for mana. Alternatively, I also don't hate Champion of Lambhold into Elves and then next turn make the Rishkar Mentor play and grow Champion at the same time. Yeah, I guess we'll go with uh, Champion plus Elves. Another casket goes after champion. And a breeding pool for a binding. Okay. So now it's time for mentor into Rishkar. And then where do we put the counters? Probably one on Pelt Collector, and then one on maybe the Elves. Don't want to put it on the Mentor. Yeah, we'll put it on the Elves. And hit for four. Golden Egg. Okay. So we are looking at 11 damage next turn. Opponent keeps up 3 mana. Let's get in there. Belt Collector tramples, so if they're like cycling a Shark Typhoon, making a 1 1 blocker, it's probably not going to be. All that amazing. I guess they can chum the 3 3 elves. Yeah, Pelt Collector tramples, so that doesn't do it. But if they chumped the uh, Lanor elves, they still would have taken lethal. So I think the only play for them was to not shock themselves and then sacrifice Golden Egg to gain 3 life to maybe draw into a sweeper on the following turn. But uh, yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw facing Lures of the Dream Den with a keepable hand. We've got good mana, even if it's a little painful. And then Elves into Gragmo into Company. Opponents on the Aura deck. The Aura deck could be a tough matchup if we don't find one of our counter doubling creatures to add a ton of power and toughness. And of course if they have the dreaded turn to Spirit Dancer start. And there's a turn to Spirit Dancer. Play a Grekmaw. And then next turn we can company. All that glitters. Turns it into a 4 6. Probably take it for now.
All right, do I need to company now or do I wait? Don't think my opponent's playing Spell Pierce necessarily. I guess we'll attack with Grackmaw. And then let damage happen. And there's a chance we can uh, catch the opponent off guard with company. All right, they've got a Vigilant Spirit Dancer now. Yeah, that's going to be pretty tough to get past. And a Staggering Inside as well. Yeah, I think this game's over now. I could jump with Elves and then Company, or I could Company first, but there's no way we're making enough uh, of a board presence to kill the Spirit Dancer, and Vivian Arcbor Ranger is pretty far from killing it. So not much we can do. We did hit Winding Constrictor and Mentor, which would have been nice. But uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point. Next turn, if they can make their Spirit Dancer unblockable by giving it protection from green. We even drew the Vivian. But yeah, the minus three is a little bit short, I'm afraid. So best I can do is... I guess plus and hope they don't go for it. With the Arcbow at my side, I can't lose a fight. My my, how you've grown. Yeah, the Spirit Dancer deck is pretty tough to beat when they have the turn to Spirit Dancer, especially in a deck like this where we don't have access to much interaction early on. But so it goes. I've got some good matchups and some bad matchups. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand, especially if we pick up a couple more lands. Turn one Pelt Collector, turn two Winding Constrictor. If my creatures die, we've got Scavenging Ooze on cleanup duty. All right, that's a nice draw. Opponent with an opt of a river glide pathway. So it could be the Neoform combo deck. As we see a stomping ground into Paradise Druid, so technically they could combo me next turn. We're just gonna attack. And play Ooze and Shambler. And then hope for a land so we can company. Alright, so they don't have the combo here. Another Pelt Collector is the draw. So I'm just gonna attack with everyone which is one point shy of lethal but there's not much I can do about it I guess there's no harm in playing collector first in case my opponent decides to trade All right, opponent's jumping sure And then follow Good Awakening in the hopes of finding the missing combo pieces. So next turn they could still combo and get rid of their entire hand, so... Yeah, this is gonna boil down to the luck of the draw. Another opt. Goes to the bottom. And damage happens. And we'll pass. And our opponent explodes, alright, so they couldn't assemble Stormcaller plus Neoform here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand, if we can pick up some lands, that is. I'll try it. Alright, 
No white mana for Mentor at the moment, and we're a little bit short of company. But we've got some mana elves in the deck as well we can draw. Alright, opponent on mono green maybe. It looks like Gruul. And yeah, we did find the lands we needed, so now I can decide between Conclave Mentor or Champion of Lambholt, and then next turn company. Uh, Mentor could get stomped, same goes for Champion. I think I'm just going to play the Mentor here. And we'll stay back with Constrictor. And then if they kill Mentor, so be it. Alright, it's gonna get stomped, at least we gain two. And that's the opponent's entire turn gone. And now we get to company. Can probably wait on company. Maybe ambush the opponents. And I don't expect much instant speed removal to kill Constrictors since Stomp doesn't do it. Alright, Spellbreaker. That's fine. And then ambush. So I could company and then get the advantage of Constrictor and there's a small chance I could save the Constrictor if we can put some counters on it, which we don't. But the sand's still okay. So do we want Champion or Ooze? Since we're definitely taking the second Constrictor. I mean, Champion's gonna get pretty big here, so I don't hate it. Yeah, it's a close call. I think I'm going with Champion here. And then, got a couple options here. Probably want a company again. Vivian can't quite kill the Spellbreaker at this point. And then Amber Cleave is probably the scariest card. Although it looks like they'll be short of mana to Ember Cleave us this turn. Uh, maybe not. If they attack with everyone, they could still cleave. Alright. What do we hit? Definitely Rishkar, and then... Could go for... Luminar Aspirant. Could go double Rishkar just to get more counters. Pelt Collector also gets kind of immediate value. And then the Rishkar puts counters on Constrictor and himself. And then we should be able to make some good blocks, even if they cleave. Champion goes here. And probably Winding Constrictor in front of Pelt Collector. I would lose Constrictor if they cleave there, but same goes for Champion. And then we're not taking 12 from the Spellbreaker at least. Probably should have put Champion in front of the Spellbreaker, because even with an Ember Cleave it would still be a trade, which would have been okay. Uh, there's a cleave. And our opponent does want to take out Constrictor, fair enough. But now Champion can play defense nicely. And we're also pretty close to just one hit KOing the opponent. 16 power. My opponent can block. But I think we want to play it safe. Play Vivian. Close your eyes, and listen to the sounds of the Kill Spellbreaker. And even if they equip Ember Cleave on the Bone Crusher, it's not too bad. 
And my opponent explodes. All right, so yeah, even Gruul with a pretty decent start and an Amber Cleave couldn't get past all the power and toughness provided by the plus one plus one counter synergies. So yeah, overall I've been enjoying this Amazon counters deck quite a bit and I've had a pretty good success rate with it. And there's quite a few customizable options as well. Lots of different cards you can try out. The core of the deck is pretty clear. You want access to a bit of ramp and company and then the eight two mana creatures that give you additional counters and then probably a couple Vivians, but outside of that you can definitely move around a lot of the different pieces. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.